Hello. This session is giving you an introduction to higher degree research at Macquarie University. My name's Nick Mansfield. I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor, HDR Training and Partnerships, and I have ultimate responsibility for oversight of HDR operations as well as our support and development activities. So what is a higher degree by research? A high degree by research is the world's highest standard academic qualifications. There are superior doctorates, but they're rare and usually given to late career researchers who have a particularly, have a particularly distinguished track record. The highest academic qualification you can get in Australia is the PhD, the Doctorate of Philosophy, which is available at Macquarie University across every academic department and discipline. The PhD is, as I said, the highest academic qualification you can receive, and it's awarded for academic research at the highest uh, world standard of, um, level, at the highest world standard. HDR candidates are amongst the greatest contributors to world research. In Australia, about 70% of research is undertaken in universities, and about half of that is undertaken by PhD and uh, Masters of Research candidates. So it's a major contribution to the world's sum of knowledge and in a great number of innovations in policy and practice in technology, in government, in industry, all rely on the research undertaken by higher degree by research candidates. So let's look a bit more closely at what each of these degrees actually are. Macquarie offers three primary higher degrees by research, and the most important one, of course, is the doctorate, the PhD. The doctorate is at level 10, the top level of the Australian Qualifications Framework. The Australian Qualifications Framework specifies exactly what each award given by universities and tertiary institutions actually means and compares them to one another in terms of the outcomes, uh, the learning, uh, the size and scope of the degree and its particular focus. So what does it say about the doctorate? For the doctorate, the AQF says, graduates at this level will have systematic and critical understanding of a complex field of learning and specialised research skills for the advancement of learning and, for, and or for professional practice. So that's to su summarise the key elements of all doctoral degrees across all fields, whether they be simply in the research area or w whether they be applied to professional practice. And the key, under the key terms here is not only that uh, the doctoral graduate will have a really sophisticated and wide-ranging understanding of their academic discipline, but the key focus of their work is on the advancement of knowledge and learning. The PhD is about being original. It's about new ideas. It's about groundbreaking research um, by discovering new facts, coming up with new concepts or ideas that have been hitherto unknown, or applying established ideas into new areas. So the key element of research and the key element of the doctorate in particular is that discovery of new knowledge and that, that contribution by way of originality. The Research Masters is at the next level down on the AQF, level nine. And it, the, the scope of the Research Masters is not quite as advanced as the PhD, but it's also about developing or evidencing a candidate's uh, deep knowledge and understanding of their particular area. Um, but it's less focused on, on an original contribution. Uh, research master's candidates undertake a research project, but it's used largely to demonstrate their own um, uh, skills, uh, the range of their knowledge, uh, and so on, and doesn't um, uh, require the same level of originality uh, and groundbreaking uh, new ideas that you get in the PhD. Okay, so that says a little bit about the degrees that we offer in the high degree research program here at Macquarie. And now I'll just say a little bit more about the practical arrangements that underpin our operations here. So ultimate responsibility for the um, oversight of uh, research training uh, at Macquarie falls in the portfolio of the Deputy Vice Chancellor Research. The DVC Research is Professor Saki Pretorius, um, and who's a world renowned microbiologist. And he has responsibility for the whole range of research activities at the university across all the labs, libraries, and facilities where we undertake research. Um, <clears throat> so he delegates responsibility for research training in particular to the Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, HDR training and partnerships, 
who has ultimate responsibilities for the two key offices that operate the, um, the programs in support and administration of higher degree by research programs. And they are the High Degree Row Research Support and Development Program and the HDR Operations Office. Uh, next down, the, the, each faculty has an Associate Dean of High Degree Research who has responsibility for the oversight of um, HDR candidature within their particular faculty. And they work very closely together, very closely with the Executive Deans and teams within the faculties and very closely with the PVCs and, and offices in order to make uh, HDR management as um, uh, um, quality as it can be. Okay, just another word about the HDR administration across the university. Uh, like all academic matters at the university in teaching and research, uh, the ultimate responsibility falls to the academic senate which makes judgments about the nature of uh, academic programs and the academic activities of the university. Academic Senate has a series of committees that are also uh, relevant to HDR administration. Firstly, the Research and Research Training Committee is a committee of the, uh, of the Academic Senate who includes in its responsibilities the uh, oversight of HDR um, and research training activities. The actual examination of HDR theses is the responsibility of the Thesis Examination Subcommittee, which the PVC chairs. And TESC, as it's called, uh, reports to the RRTC. It's a subcommittee of RRTC. So once all the examination outcomes are received and a final decision is made about your thesis, uh, it will be signed off by that committee and then reported to um, the Research and Research Training Committee for final validation. There's also a Higher Degrees by Research Management Committee, which uh, brings together members from across the university to deal with the more practical issues of the oversight and, and operations of HDR um, management. Finally, it's worth mentioning the ethics committees, which don't fall under the same portfolio, but are uh, relevant to the work of anybody uh, who is dealing with um, either human or animal, animal subjects or whose work uh, impinges on biosafety issues. Australia has amongst the most stringent requirements about research ethics of any country in the world, and it's absolutely important that if your work is uh, related to uh, human subjects in any way, um, to animal subjects, or falls under biosafety regulations, that you work with those committees in order to get the, the right approvals to make sure that your work is undertaken in conformity with those standards. Just a word about the HDR operations side of the portfolio. Um, the HDR operations is the team that you already would have been dealing with through the process of application and inquiry. Uh, and it has responsibility for the whole life cycle of HDR candidature. Uh, from commencements, the issues that arise um, in enrolling you as a candidate, through the progressions, different issues that may come up during your candidature, different types of leave you might need or want to take. Uh, and finally, it also arranges the examination and the completion processes um, that, that sign off on the, on the satisfactory completion of your requirements. It also covers and administers the HDR scholarships that a large number of our candidates are on, both domestic and international. And it also has responsibility for negotiating and setting up arrangements with our international partners. Macquarie is the biggest player in Australia in the Cochitel and Joint PhD programs, which are programs where you can undertake your PhD enrolled at two and sometimes more universities across the world. And they, of course, require complex negotiations between universities to make sure all the requirements of institutions and all the legal requirements of different jurisdictions have been met. And so all those things fall under the um, uh, oversight of the HDR operations team. Um, we also have the HDR support and development team, which is made up of four separate components. And the focus here is on guaranteeing the quality of your candidature and the quality of your experience. So it, the first component of the team is the HDR supervision enhancement program. That's not a candidate facing uh, um, a program, but one that's directed towards supervisors, run by Associate Professor Bill Ashraf. The program is in, um, uh, the program involves 
uh, training up and upskilling HDR supervisors so they're the best that they can be, and running the Supervision Fellowship Program, which gives uh, HDR supervisors accreditation for the quality of the work that they're doing and their commitment to HDR supervision. We also have the HDR Learning Skills Program under Dr. Juliet Lum and her team. And the focus here is on providing you with the communication and especially writing skills that are, going to, that are going to support you through your candidature. And they have a wide range of programs, workshops, one-on-one -on -one consultations, group writing activities, all focused on providing you with the kind of support, encouragement and advice to make your um, writing and, and, um, and other forms of research communication as successful and effective as possible. The HDR Professional Skills and Industry Placements Internships team with Sally Purcell and Catherine Innes is focused on, provide, on making sure that HDR candidates firstly have those, the employability skills that will make available to them a whole range of different career opportunities, not only in academia but beyond after they graduate. And Catherine's work focuses on developing placements and internships for candidates in industry or government, uh, uh, during candidature uh, especially, but also with an eye to what might be possible for you afterwards. So the focus there is on developing your skills as an employable graduate when you complete. And finally, we have the HDR Mentors team under Kim Tan. And the HDR Mentors is a peer-to-peer -peer support network um, run by, by HDR candidates themselves. And the focus is on providing a supportive and sustaining and welcoming community for HDR candidates coming to the to some to Australia and some to, and to the Macquarie campus for the first time to make them feel very much at home, to share experiences and provide advice and support. The university's, the, the key thing that the university offers to you, of course, is supervision. And, and Macquarie has a range of different super, types of supervisors that are put in place in order to support and, um, and mentor and manage your candidature. Not every candidate will have supervisors in every one of these categories and some of them uh, are not used unless there are specific circumstances to do with the nature of the research or the kind of activity that you're undertaking while enrolled. You all will have though a principal supervisor who has ultimate responsibility for your candidature both in administration terms and also in managing your academic work. So we'll advise you on how to undertake your research, uh, advise you on, um, uh, give you feedback on, on uh, as you draft chapters or papers that are going to go into your thesis, and also give you more general advice about your professional development as a researcher. The associate supervisor um, will work with you in a variety of different ways. Everybody has an associate supervisor, but the function may be slightly different. An associate supervisor can be somebody with a level of expertise or with uh, um, knowledge of a piece of technology that your principal supervisor doesn't have that will supplement your principal supervisor's knowledge. But it could also be simply your reserve supervisor or another set of ears that you can consult and get advice from. But the associate supervisor works very much under the direction of your principal supervisor. Some candidates will have an adjunct supervisor. An adjunct supervisor is simply the general term for a supervisor who is not an employee of Macquarie University. Sometimes this is someone who is retired, who's continued their work as a supervisor. Sometimes it's a supervisor at another institution. If you're on a joint or co tell PhD program, for example, you'll have another supervisor overseas and that supervisor will be an adjunct supervisor in Macquarie's terms. Or it simply could be somebody that you connect with who has certain kinds of expertise at another university in Sydney or elsewhere that can provide you uh, with a bit of supervision um, advice. Those candidates who are undertaking their research heavily in industry, some of our candidates are embedded in, in, in workplaces and in industry, will have an industry end user supervisor um, who is, has responsibility for managing your candidature on site. Candidates who are working in areas that are to do with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research, either by engaging with Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander subjects, or by working on site or on uh, issues relevant to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, will be appointed an HDR cultural advisor whose role is really to help you with the, the protocols and, and um, uh, negotiations to do with, with um, um, uh, and ethical issues relating 
to working in areas to do with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And some candidates, especially those undertaking field work, may have an HDR advisor who could also be someone on site who's not actually at working at the level of academic supervision but may be a key contact for you if you're doing field work in a particular area or if you're working in, a, in, a, um, uh, in certain environments where you need to have that kind of contact. All of these things are explained more fully in the HDR supervision policy and procedure and I'd encourage you to have a look at that. Uh, at, at some time to familiarise yourself with all the details of the university's approach to supervision. Finally, although we provide you this set of different academic support teams, the fundamental aim of research training degrees is to make you into an autonomous researcher. So ultimately all the decisions uh, that are crucial to the success of your candidature are decisions that you will make yourself. And by the time you complete, when the university gives you a research training degree, what it's saying is that you're somebody who's equipped to undertake a research project from conception all the way through to completion and communication, more or less on your own. And that that's, that's a huge set of skills and, uh, and, and, um, uh, and they're the skills that you will need in order to complete an, a PhD degree and the university um, is validating you in uh, having those skills when it awards you with the degree. So the focus is on taking the advice but of, of a whole range of different experts but ultimately making decisions yourself and the, so that the outcome of your research, the PhD thesis or master's thesis that you produce is very much proudly your own work. Finally, I'd advise you to uh, do as much as you can to participate in the um, uh, what's it made available to you at the university, first through supervision, but also through what's called intellectual climate, which is the range of academic programs, seminars, workshops that are available through the support and development teams, through faculties, through individual departments. Participate as much as you can in the university's campus activities. HDR can be a lonely activity and it's important that you um, suck up all the benefits of the, of the different um, uh, um, and rich activities, the range of activities that are going on across the whole university. The university is also very well aware that HDR candidature involves a whole set of personal challenges, not only academic, uh, but also to do with the stress and challenges of, of, um, uh, of candidature and provides a whole range of support services through campus wellbeing that, uh, that give you that level of support. So if you feel at any time that you need any kind of help and support, through, uh, whether it be in the area of, of physical health, financial advice, advocacy, mental health, don't hesitate to take advantage of the other services that the university has to offer. And finally, a very, one very important thing is don't ever forget how important what you do and who you are as an HDR candidate is to the university. Research is what makes a university a university. It, distinguish, it distinguishes it from all other kinds of academic institutions, schools, colleges, and so on, all exist to, uh, to disseminate and distribute knowledge to teach fundamentally. But universities see that there's an organic and inseparable link between the dissemination of knowledge and the discovery of knowledge, between teaching and research. So research is what defines a university and it is at the heart of the university's mission and its contribution to society. And as I mentioned earlier, what HDR candidates do is contribute about half, if not more, of the research that the university undertakes. So your individual projects are important because they contribute either to the stock of world knowledge or more broadly to social practices, to the way that all institutions in society operate, to the way cultures develop, to the way economic programs um, are implemented, the way institutions work, whether they be banks, schools, hospitals, uh, the courts, um, and it also contributes by inventing new, new items of technology and new processes. It has a huge impact on the society, but it's absolutely fundamental uh, to the definition of what the university is. And so we value you and we value your work and are here to support and make your candidature as happy and successful as possible. <laughs>